the UMW will be hosting a potato luncheon. There will be loaded baked, there will be a loaded baked potato bar, a salad bar, and dessert following Sunday school at 11 a.m. You can eat here or you can take a plate to go. All donations will be used to sponsor UMW local missions projects. If we have any graduates in our midst, um, please submit their names to the church office. We will hopefully be celebrating any graduates we have in worship on May 29th. May, June upper rooms are available for pickup at both front, uh, at both sanctuary entrances. Also, on May 22nd, I will be out of town. Uh, I am doing a wedding in Kansas, and so Margaret Fisher will be preaching in church on the May on May 22nd, and Reverend Dane Van Ace, the pastor at Samuel United Methodist, will be available for any pastoral emergencies. Uh, Margaret will have his contact information. And finally, please fill out the attendance pad at the end of your pew so that we know you are with us this morning. And now, most importantly, I want you to know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Come, let us praise and worship God. The Lord, the Lord is our shepherd, our Lord and our God. Celebrate the many ways in which God cares for our lives. Bring your pastures and songs to the waters, and comfort us. Even though difficulties happen in our lives, God is still with us. Surely, God's mercy accompanies us on our journey. And we will dwell in God's house forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 474, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus 
Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Painfully closing the door on relationship 
leaving you holding your heart broken in your hands. And like Hagar, now you are mothering alone. I want you to know that I am praying for you. If motherhood is your greatest joy and toughest struggle all rolled into one. I want you to know that I am praying for you. If you're watching your child battle substance abuse, a public legal situation, mental illness, or another situation which you can merely watch unfold. I want you to know that I am praying for you. If you, like so many before you, do not wish to be a mother, are not married, or in so many other ways do not fit into societal expectations, I want you to know that I am praying for you. If you carry the beautiful, exhausting, maddening, heartbreaking, wonderful labor of mothering, even though you do not have children of your own. I want you to know that I am praying for you. If you have made the choice to not be a mother. I want you to know that I am praying for you. If you see yourself reflected in all or none of these stories. This Mother's Day, wherever you are, and whoever you are, we walk with you. You are loved. You are seen. You are worthy. And may you know the deep love without end of our big, wild, beautiful God, who is the very best example of a parent that we know. Amen. You and may remain in your seats as we sing together hymn number 274, Women in the Night. We will sing the refrain first, and then we will sing verses 1 through 4 without the refrain, and then we will sing the refrain again, and then we will sing verses 5 through 8, and then we will sing the refrain again. If you get lost, it is all correct on the screen. <laughs>
Okay, B. This morning our scripture reading comes from Acts chapter 10, or chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with a request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, Simon a tanner. These are the words of God for the people of God. On this Mother's Day, I can't help but think about all of the mothers and mother, mother figures in my life. I think about my paternal grandmother, who loved making clothes for my siblings and me. Whenever she would go out shopping for herself, she would often see cute children's clothes and immediately run back to her car where she kept a sketch pad so she could draw the design and make it handmade for us. I think about her encouraging me to be brave by not letting me sit in the car to feed the geese at Davy Crockett Park. I think about the week we got ice cream sundaes from Sonic every single night because everyone knows the cure for homesickness is a Sonic ice cream sundae. I think about my maternal grandmother, who we ate dinner with every Monday night. I think about driving her and her friends to church on Wednesday nights, praying my driving was good enough for them. I think about her taking us on trips to the zoo. I think about eating orange juice popsicles on the kitchen floor so that if, we, if, when, we did make a mess, it was easier to clean up. I think about the talent shows and circuses we put on in their basement and how she would cheer for and encourage us, no matter the actual quality of these performances. I think about Miss Becky in Sparta, who sat next to me in the choir loft when I was in the third grade and would acolyte every Sunday. I think about her sharing her hymnal with me and making sure I didn't get lost in the lines. I think about the activities she had planned for me to help me pay attention just a little bit better in the service. I think about my own mother and her unconditional love for me, particularly in my teen years when she might have wanted a few less conditions to love me through. I think about our seemingly meaningless conversations on the phone that we have while we're running errands so that we don't have to run our errands alone. I think about her support throughout my own pregnancy now as she has driven to my house with very little notice to comfort me through the throes of morning sickness. I think about my mother-in-law and how lucky I am to have her in my life. I think about her constant excitement and love for life. I think about her ability to call at exactly the right time when I am in desperate need of advice. I think about Mickey, who I adopted as my Atlanta mom while I was in seminary who gave me a standing invitation to family dinner every night. I think about the countless women 
who helped me grow into the person I am today. I also think about the women who helped them grow into the women that they were and are. I think about the complexity of those relationships. I think about the great cloud of witnesses that surrounds me and encourage me as I begin my own journey into mothering. And I think that it is wholly appropriate and encouraging that we hear the story of Tabitha today. We don't get a ton of information, but Luke does offer us a description of who Tabitha was in her community. She was marginalized. She was a believer of Christ. She was committed to good deeds, and the community was deeply affected by her death. To demonstrate the depth of Tabitha's good deeds, a literal translation of verse 36 reads, she was full of good deeds and alms, which she continually did. When Peter arrives in Joppa, the widows stood around him, deep in their grief, showing him the garments Tabitha had made for him for them before she died. Luke suggests that this demonstration shows her ability to care for them financially and her commitment to serving them. Women, particularly widows, were very much on the margins of society. And Tabitha demonstrated deep compassion and love for them, making her a beloved member of the community. Tabitha was able to see beyond the labels that society had placed on them and care for them body and soul. She was a disciple not because of any familial connection or even due to her wealth, but because of the network she built with those around her. And her ministry reminds us of the commitment that we find in Acts chapter 6 to ensure that no widow was overlooked in Jerusalem. In Acts 6, we find that seven men have been commissioned as deacons for this task. We find no such commission for Tabitha, though she was clearly engaged in a similar ministry. I so deeply appreciate her work and her ministry, especially on this Mother's Day. Tabitha provided a motherly support to the women around her, to the marginalized around her. This community she has created is built on the shared grief they have experienced. And then this community once again finds itself in the depth of grief as they lose the person who has cared for them so deeply. It was these women, these widows, who affirmed Tabitha's ministry to Peter. And we feel the depth of their grief with them as we think about the church mothers who are no longer with us, but who deeply impacted our lives and faith. While I might not know their specific names here in this congregation, I would be willing to guess that if I asked you all to yell out a name of a woman in this congregation who impacted you, you have already thought of one. Or multiple. And we continue to carry them with us as we follow in their footsteps. Tabitha also demonstrates for us that our ministry is important, regardless of our title or status. Our ministry is important, especially when we stand with those on the margins of society. Our ministry is important because we have known the complexity and depth of being in ministry together which includes the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. 
Our ministry is important because there are times when we have felt disconnected <coughs> because of our age or our race or our gender. And yet, we have still demonstrated the deep love of God. We give thanks that Tabitha's ministry was able to continue through the miracle of her resurrection. We give thanks for the ministry of the women with whom she was in community. We give thanks for the examples she set before us to care for the marginalized, to care for all people, body and soul. We give thanks for the women in our own lives who have demonstrated that same care for us and for our community. We give thanks for knowing that we follow in their footsteps to be in ministry regardless of our title or status. And so may we continue to grow in ministry and leave a legacy of sharing the deep an unconditional love of God for body and soul. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. God, we give you thanks for these, our gifts, gifts that you have graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to care for all people, body and soul, so that your kingdom may be spread on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
holy and loving God, God who mothers us all, God who has given us such a wonderful example of a parent. We give you thanks for this day, for our gathering together once more, for the beautiful sunshine and warmth we feel. Oh God, on this day, we lift up to you all of the mothers in our lives. For the complexity of what that relationship sometimes is. For the deep love and joy that that relationship brings. For the complexity of this day, we pray. God, we also lift up to you all of the prayers of our hearts. Knowing that when we come into this space, we bring the entirety of our being. And the entirety of our being is deeply loved by you. God, we pray for our world that continues to face violence and oppression. May your peace and hope be known throughout the land. May we bear witness to the transformation happening around us. Oh God, we pray for our nation. For the divisiveness among us. For our willingness to see others as less than. May you open our eyes so that we might see the divine in one another, so that we might grow in deeper love for you and for each other. So God, we pray for this community, for both the grief and the joy it brings. For the love and camaraderie and invitation. Oh God, we know that you are present with us in this space. Oh God, we pray for ourselves. We lift up to you the prayers deep within our hearts. Prayers that are beyond words. Prayers are ready to be shared. For you have searched us and know us and love us all the same. We are your beloved children. And as your beloved children, we pray together the prayer Jesus first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together from the Faith You Station, number 2140, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart.
body and soul. And we do so knowing that it is rooted in the deep love of Christ. And so go in peace in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Amen.